President Biden calls for a war crimes trial against Russian President Vladimir Putin as Ukraine makes new allegations. So what does that mean going forward? Political analyst Rick Epps joins us now with the very latest. Good morning to you, Rick. Good morning. Good to see you. Well, thank you for being here. We've been talking about this for a little over a month now. Yeah. Uh, what did you make of President Biden calling for a war crimes trial? Well, this is interesting because it sets up the framework for uh, how or if Putin can exit this mess that he's created. And by finally stepping in and calling this a war crime, especially after in light of the recent atrocities, uh, mm -hmm. says that the United States is publicly now uh, saying that uh, challenging Russia on with regards to their, actually in Putin and his state of, his, his uh, diplomatic state on the world stage mm -hmm. and it's going to be very telling especially if we can get some teeth to it and talk to me about those atrocities I know we were talking this morning about yeah. how uh, Zelensky actually came back to one it looks like one of the suburbs yeah. there in Ukraine talk to me a little <clears throat> bit about what, what you're seeing happening well uh, so especially with some of my my colleagues and sources that are there it's no one realized that in the suburbs of Kiev for example that you know the uh, the people who were tied up and shot in the back of the head the mass graves uh, even the, the amount of destruction, I think, was really shocking to people to see uh, just the level of devastation uh, that's been levied on not just you know around Kiev and 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 Maripol and, and Kharkiv and other areas, but just the how the people have suffered in the process. And I think once you put a humanitarian face on it, it really starts to touch the the general public. And the world, when the world sees this, it really brings a lot of pressure to bear on the political infrastructure of countries to take action. And, mm -hmm. and uh, that's, a, that's the huge step in trying to get things done. How is, I mean, some Russians are reacting, right, to the allegations. And, and what are they saying? Well, I mean, you know, because Putin controls the narrative inside of Russia, uh, because he's blocked out a lot of social media and inf normal information flow places for public. You know, it's the whole notion of well, you know, these are fake, you know, fake images that really are the bodies don't aren't really there. They're Ukrainians are just trying to create, a, you know, mm. a negative image of, of the Russian mm -hmm. people and, and of Putin. Uh, however, inside of Russia, there are also a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, inside infrastructure of, you know, the dark web, for example, where they can get information out to the general public. I think also there's a lot of people outside of Russia who are Russian who are also have the capability of reaching inside. And then the fact that they've arrested, you know, thousands and thousands of Russian citizens for protesting says a lot to the general public. Now, there are those Russians that are the true believers right. that just want to stick their head in the sand. But I would say there's probably, you know, more than 50 percent of the people who realize that this is happening and this is real. And no matter what, how they try to clean it up. It looks very ugly the way that they've created this. You bring up a good point. Just be, I, I have a friend yeah. who's who's Russian who lives here, yeah. and I was just asking her recently how because she has family back in Russia. Yeah. Like, how are your parents doing? How's your family doing? And she says that they're they're devastated, and it's because of the information she's re relaying back to her family because otherwise they're not they're not receiving it. Yeah. And so she's saying that they're they're actually scared as well because they well, don't know what's going to happen. Well, a lot of people can't even reach their their families. Uh -huh. I have a friend whose parents are locked down and they can't even reach they don't know how they are because the communications are so, you know, disconnected. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. it's, you know, a lot of them are very very scared. A lot of them are in Poland, some of them are further out uh, in Germany and and Cyprus and other places, but there's a huge uh, concern about the lack of communication there too. Well, can Putin ever <laughs> diplomatically recover from all this? Yeah, it's interesting how the answer to that is I don't believe so. Uh, however, the world economics and the, you know money uh, buy a lot of forgiveness unfortunately uh, and what we've seen is that this is what's happened as you look at the global stage the like in Europe, for example, uh, a lot of the Western European countries are codependent on Russia for the oil. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so what this does is they have bought a lot of fa favors and a lot of influence. And so when you look at Great Britain, for example, for the first time, uh, a, f a son of the former KGB agent was just admitted to the House of Lords in London. With the British Secret Service and, and intelligence agencies warning that this that this individual, based on their history with their father, mm. uh, was a potential security risk, but because of the money, mm. they are. And so this is what happens, even not just in Europe, but also with other Western democracies. They're so tethered to the money that sure. they have the the Russian oligarchs and the Russian government have bought influence that pushes the, those countries to not 
come at them so harshly with regard to policies. Would you say that the U.S. and its allies are doing enough to pressure Russia? I think that they're doing what they can at this point because of the money. I think that the that the uh, sanctions are working. I think it really each time they they keep increasing them. So that uh, that gives us a framework that allows for uh, more pressure to be brought to bear. Certainly, you know, Russia is now talking about going to the ruble and trying to you know bring other bring bring other people down economically. However, as the West tries to figure out how to move oil from other sources to, to help the countries mm -hmm. that need it, that, that helps diminish Russia's ability to do this. Um, but I would say, yeah, I think this is a, we're in a situation now where uh, the only thing Putin can do at this point is really try to figure out how to exit. And the question is, when, if he does, uh, how will the world war crimes issue come up? And that's going to come up. Mm -hmm. The International Criminal Court certainly has it has already been handed this case. Uh, there's also the you know UN you know Human Rights Commission. There's also the ICJ, the International Court of Justice. All are on the periphery of this, and it's going to be interesting to see if any of them have have the teeth to be able to go after or prosecute a global power. Mm -hmm. Historically, they haven't. Even the United States, when we have violated. You know, we're always like, uh, no, we're not going to let you mm -hmm. buy. We're not going to let you try us. So it'll be interesting to see how far they get with Putin on this. But uh, I want to give credit to the Ukrainian people for what people thought would be a two or three day before they got yes. run over. That they have just shown a tremendous resilience, and uh, you know, and that's you know, it's an ugly part of war. But my gosh, they have really done an incredible job of sustaining themselves. And Zelensky has taken the moment and made himself quite the leader yeah. at this time. Rick. I, I'm sure we'll be talking about this for, unfortunately, for some time to come. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're, we're going to have you back and, and just make mm -hmm. sure that we catch up with you so you can keep us posted. Well, thank you okay. so much. Rick, thank you for being here. Have a great day.